So the last 3D modeling video seemed to go down well. So let's do another one. It's time for, hell yeah, even more modeling. Welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we make more, spend less, and go faster. So this is the second and final episode in our mini-series on 3D modelling. And in this one, we're going to go through a part that you haven't seen before, again, modelled from scratch. And we're also going to go on to the big dog, the inlet manifold for the individual throttle bodies. So in the first episode, we covered over... Um, the, the basics of 3D modeling, the um, constraints, how we use those, and we modeled the part from start to finish. And we also talked about the software. So if you've got any questions about that stuff, head over to the video, I'll put a link probably up here, and check that out. But come back afterwards and watch the rest of this one. So once you've watched these videos and you've learned everything I can teach you, head over to this chap, Lars Christiansen, he is very, very good. He's got all the videos on all of the topics and he is a very good teacher. So I highly recommend, if you've got a specific thing you need to know about, check out Lars Christiansen. Um, it's exactly where I go when I need to actually know what I'm doing. Right, so we do some modeling, let's. <laughs> So the first model we're gonna do isn't one you've seen on the channel before, and it's not even for this channel. It's for Kev over at the Gentleman's Motor Racing Team. So you should check out the channel if you're interested in Clubman Motorsport. He does a lot of good stuff, and he basically proves that you can do motorsport for less money than you think you can and have a great giggle doing it. But he's also got a rather lovely build of a classic mini rally car. And he's got one of those fancy dancy removable steering wheels. Well, if he's anything like me, he's going to lose it unless he's got a specific place to put it. So I thought, let's make him a hook to hang from his roll cage. Let's look at it. So as is traditional, we'll start on creating a sketch on XY plane. So... As I said, this is going around a roll cage bar. So first off, we'll model the hole for that. And we'll say it's 38 mil in diameter. And to be fair, we've got the scales a bit wound up. But there you go, 38 mil, beautiful. And I know I need a square that sits around the outside of that, because I've done a bit of sketching of 54 mil, because that's going to house the fasteners either side. So let's put that in. So we'll do this here, 54, 54. Like I say, we do it out in there and then bring it in with constraints. So for me, the easiest way of doing this is going to be throwing some construction lines in. So you see it pulls up the little triangle there when I hold it in rough in the middle, that's that's constraining these construction lines to the middle of this square. And you can see we haven't quite got them there. Let's have another go at that. There we go. Didn't quite have it. There you go. So now we've got the midpoint constraint. We can make that coincident. To there and that coincident to there and there you go everything's now nice and concentric with squares by the way beautiful so that's the kind of the top piece to clamp around the roll bar now what we'll do is make the hook section so because kevin's told me i know he wants the center of the hook about 100 mil below the bottom of the roll bar so again i'm going to use a construction line i'm going to make that construction line 100 mil long and i what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it co-linear with this construction line so it's always going to be in line with that 
And then I'm going to bring this point, I'm going to make that coincident with this circle. And there you go. So that's now, again, fully constrained, lovely. So we're going to bring in a circle down here, which is going to be basically the hook. So we'll make that 35 mil. I'm a devil for this. Do it all the time. I never turn off construction lines. So then what I want to do is I want to bring in a line from here. And I want to bring it. Oh, no, sorry. First off, then I want to make this. I want to bring this out. So there's about what a six mil wall. Let's go with eight mil wall. Let's make it a bit chunkier. Why not? And I've done it again. Let's turn construction lines off. There you go. So now I'm going to bring some things down from there. It's not quite right. So I'm just going to bring, use the tangent constraint and bring that point in. Let's try that again. I'll bring that tangent to there, so that pulls that in. And I think we'll just bring that into the bottom corner there. There we go. Look at that. And now we've got this bit flapping around down here. Now it doesn't really matter because it's not going to create a profile there, but we'll just tidy it up and use the trim tool. There you go. Now I know I want this to tie up from there. So I'm just going to bring this in eight mil to match that. And there you have it. We've got ah, we go what looks like the starter of a hook. So all we need to do is to make this into an actual hook. So I'm going to bring a construction line out to here, which then gives me a line here I can draw something on. So I'm going to create a two point circle, one point there, one point there. Now you can see here that's not constrained. I could let this go. I know I'm not going to need to come and change these dimensions, but because it's a tutorial, why not? Now you see here that's got the perpen sorry the tangential tangent um, constraint there, but it doesn't have it on that side. So I think what we'll do is we'll put it in that to there, and you see it's appeared. And look at that! Lo and behold, it's all fully constrained. Excellent. So. Let's finish that, that sketch. Let's turn it back on. And now we can do some extrusion. So again, another little shortcut. If you just press E, it shows it, it shows it there in the pop-up E, and you press it and it brings this up. So normally you just click on the profiles you want, like this, oh, you don't want that one, David, that one, and that one. See, we're discarding the bit we don't need but that helps to make something constrained because it's a full circle. But anyway, um, and you just drag it out to whatever you want. Yeah, so you use that there and then you get, yeah, and you drag it out. But we're not going to do that this time. We're going to use this box because I don't want it to be just one side of the plane I've drawn on. I want it to be equal either side because I want to use that center line for features that are going to run down the center. So, we go, instead of going one side, we go symmetrical. And we say, we can either measure the half length or the whole width. And I want it to be 25 mil in diameter, in, in width. Click OK, and there you have it. Look at that, beautiful. So, what we'll go on and do now, now there's a lot of tidying up to be done here. Um, one thing I'll do sooner rather than later, because it's annoying me even now, is we will add a fillet to here, because that's just, it just looks awful, doesn't it? So if we add that fillet like that, we can drag it out as much as we like and make it 
huge. There's no need for all of that. It's a waste of material. So we'll just make it yeah, like that. That looks quite nice, I think. There you have it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the holes through this now for the fasteners. Now, the fasteners need to be able to, because as this is in the car, the roof's going to be very close to that. You need to get the roll cage quite close to the roof. And there's, you're not going to be able to get the, uh, the set screws in from the top. Oh, sorry. Pan head bolts in from the top. So they need to come in from the bottom. But what we'll do, we'll not worry about that too much. We'll just start off putting the holes for them all the way through. And we're going to start off at the top surface to do that. So all the extrusions we've done so far have been off planes or they've been off um, uh, projected planes. But we're going to use, instead of a plane, we're going to use a planar surface. So a planar surface is just any surface that the software thinks is flat and the software thinks that is perfectly flat so it may as well be a plane so we can select it and we can create a sketch on it so now you can see we've got a plane literally on that surface and we, we're now free to draw on it to do what we like so i want two because these are m5 bolts i want two 5.5 mil bolts positioned towards the edge of that so again I'm not going to mess around I know I find this a lot easier to put the drawing put position the parts if I've got some center lines to work from so I'm going to create again some construction lines there to there and there to there so now I've got a very clear idea of where the middle of my um, face is and then I can just create Two drawings, oh, turn off blooming constraints, David. Two circles, 5.5 and 5.5. And I know I can constrain that to there and I can give myself a diameter, a distance from there. And I think I'm gonna make that 22. Yeah, that feels about right. And instead of constraining that all separately, I'm going to use the symmetry. And I'm going to say that I want that and that to be symmetrical around that line. And because that one's fully constrained, it moves that one. And if we change, if I change this, it moves that one in as well. So whatever I do with this one, this one shall follow. We'll put that back to 22 mil. And there you have it. So what we'll do is we will then extrude these, but we can't do the same extrusion with both of them because I want to extrude them in different ways. So we're going to do a, a cut extrusion. So I'll just position this so it's easier to see. So I want to do a, a cut extrusion. So I'm going to drag that down, but how far do I want to drag it down? Well, I only want to drag it down so it cuts this piece. So I could, you know, I could have it go all the way there and just end in space. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an object. I'm going to extrude, choose that cut extrusion to go until it hits something that I can specify. I want it to hit that surface, yeah? So that surface now, so however, if I change that, um, the thickness there, it stops there. It'll always go until it hits that surface. If I change that surface, I might need to come back and revisit it, but I'm essentially I'm constraining the extrusion to the model, which is also built on constraints. So you can see how, again, things are logically getting stacked on top of each other. So I'll click okay to that. And now we've got a five, a 5.5 mil hole running all the way through the model. We can check it doesn't encroach into the um, the hole there for the for the roll bar, and it goes all the way through. So it's time to do the same thing with the other sketch, with the other circle. So I'll turn that sketch back on. There you go, and I click E for extrude and 
onto that circle there. Now, again, I'm going to want to do a uh, go. Come on, there we go. Hmm. So, now I could do, I could go all the way through to the surface, but in the a in, in the age of age, aid of doing something and teaching people, we're going to use a different kind of extent type. We're not going to do distance. We're just going to go through all. Because I know we're never ever going to put anything down here that's going to need um, me to... Um So I can simply click OK, and it gives me a hole going all the way through. There we go. So that one hole goes all the way through the part there. That one goes through that, that hole. Excellent. So we're getting there. But OK, so now we've got 5.5 mil holes. We actually need to put something in for the features themselves. Frustratingly, I don't have a planar surface I can go up from here. But I can put one in. So I can create an offset plane and I can put it on there and I can drag it down and I can drag it down until I get to that feature there. So if I click on that feature, that brings it in line, put this there, brings it in line with that feature. So I know I want it 5.5 mil. I have got this head here. I need a, an 8.8 .8 mil diameter hole and I need it 5.5 deep. And I need it under this hole and under that hole. So we put that offset plane in and then we can, we can draw on it. So let's create a sketch on that offside, off, offset plane. But at the moment, again, the body's not helping me. So I'm gonna turn the body off. And I know I've got these circles here that follow through and give me the center line. So I'm going to project those circles down onto my drawing. So as I did before, project, project that part and that part. So now I've got some reference on the plane where I need to start creating my bolt holes. So I know I need, and I can do it on the center of here, five, I need 8.8 .8 mm diameter. And I'll create another one over here as well. Now, again, everything follows from somewhere else. So if I now, if I wanted to change the position of these, or I want to move them in and out, I just change these bolt, these holes, the first holes I did, because everything is following logically from there. And there's a, there's a consistent timeline. Nothing I'm doing is just being created out of nowhere. If I know the bolt head wants to follow the, the hole for the rest of the bolt, I can use the same hole. So there we have it. And I know I'm going to extrude this one and I know I want to extrude it up. I'm going to do two sides again. And I'm going to want to do 5.5 up this way. So 5.5. I shouldn't have pressed enter. And now I'm going to want to do a um, only a couple of mil, I'm doing a cut here as well, and I want to just do a couple of mil there, and I could do another, um, yeah, two object, and we'll say we're going through to this surface again. There you have it. Turn the body back on, let's see if it's worked. And look at that, beautiful. So let's do the same, let's turn on that sketch again. You see now I've got this sketch appear here. And let's do the same for this inside one. But again, we're going to need to use different parameters for this than we did for this extrusion, so that's why we're doing them separately. So let's turn the body off again, makes it easier to select it. And we will go 
up 5.5 so we keep it nice and consistent again we want two sides and this one here if you recall we did a minus we didn't do a minus we did a through everything extent all and all there we go and if I click OK, now we've got, and I'll turn all the sketches off so we get a good idea of what we've got here. We've got a bolt hole all the way through there. Nice little attractive teardrop shape. So we've got our bolt holes. We've got access. Kevin might need quite a long uh, Allen key, but I'm sure he's got one in his toolkit. So now we're just going to create the rebate for this. So I know, put simply, I need a 10 mil long hole. That is, oh, what was it? That's 6.8, 6.7. And that gives me about 0.3 of a mil um, interference that I will, that we then melt as we push this in with a soldering iron. So I can go back actually to the original sketch that I did on top of here, which is this one. There we have it. Now you can name the sketches so you can tell it makes it easier to navigate. This isn't particularly complicated, so we're not gonna bother, but we can go back here and we can just draw. Basically we're time traveling. We're just going back. Oh, well, I wish I'd thought of that when I did it first. It's more of a demonstration, but you know, you can, um, you can use this and really go backwards and forwards. It, it can be really helpful. So 6.7, so think of what I said, and 6.7 here, and finish that, and we can turn the sketches back on so we can see them, and then we will extrude them down. Both of them are having the same extrusion characteristics. They can both go in 10 mil, let's just have it. We get a bit of angle on here so we can see what's going on. Okay, so <laughs> clearly something's gone wrong there. And it's not a 10 mil new extrusion that we want. We want a cut. So let's have another look. Okay, so we need to throw in minus 10. And there you go. Excellent. So there you have it. That's the bare bones of it. So now we can make it a bit tidier and then we can do the final split. So I'm going to throw in a whole load of um, chamfers here. So get out the fillet tool and I'm going to put a load of fillets in. because I know it'll look a lot better. And I give it maybe two mil fillet. Now, sometimes you might get some errors. So I'll just want to do that face first. Let's you break it down, do less. There you go. Do that face as well. That's it, two mil. And then we'll also go in and do these edges around here. That edge and that edge. And we'll say, right, make that another two. And that's looking pretty good. So let's get on to splitting this thing so what we need to do is we now we've got everything modeled and we know it fits together beautifully we need to split this so what i could do is i could split it across here with that plane 
but I actually want to give a little bit of a gap so I can just give it a little bit of crush. So I want to leave a two mil, I'm gonna cut a two mil slice out of here. So again, there's probably better ways of doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the split body and really it wants a plane to, 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 to do that. So I'm going to use two offset planes, one, one mil up and one, one mil down. So you can see what I've done there. There's the original plane XZ and there's one plus one mil, one minus one mil. And we go to here. So we go to split body, we select that as the body and splitting tools. So you can try, you can pick it up there or we can go over to uh, these constructions and we can use the planes that we've just created. And we do that. And you can see there we've got new lines here and we open the bodies see we've had new bodies created so we if we hover over them we can see them there now this is a quirk so i don't want them there anymore i mean i can do whatever i want with these i could move it i could export it as it is but i want it to look like how it's going to look so i could delete these but as soon as i delete that it goes back to normal it's it's strange because because i'm deleting that body i'm deleting the bit of the timeline that we created that body. So instead of doing delete, I'm just going to use the remove. So it doesn't remove it, it doesn't delete it from the whole timeline. It just removes it from the view. And so it's an important difference. You should want to know that. So there you have it. That's our completed helmet hook. Um, a few new tools in there, nothing particularly scary, but we'll send that to the slicer. We'll put it on the printer and get it printed. So it's time to get into the main event, the individual throttle bodies manifold. Um, so we're going to use this, which is a inlet manifold gasket as a template. So I've offered this up to the head and it's very accurate, it's about perfect. So, we need to get this into there somehow. And I mean, we could spend a lot of time with some calipers and going around measuring every single thing. And that's not too bad for the key dimensions, but for everything else, it's a bit, it's a bit tricky, um, time consuming certainly. Or we could take a photograph and that, that works a bit better, a bit quicker, but um, it, unfortunately you've got like a parallax error thing going to happen because you're only taking light from one point. Better than these is to put it on a scanner because as the scanner goes along, it's only looking directly up, so there's no parallax error. So that's exactly what I did. However, I had to use um, my personal uh, printer and that's not big enough to fit this on so I had to do it twice which meant that I needed to stitch these two pictures together which I did in GIMP no not that GIMP um, this GIMP uh, which is uh, basically think three wear Photoshop but this isn't a tutorial on how to use GIMP no this is a tutorial on fusion so let's get into it so what we'll do is first of all we will use that picture but first of all i'm just going to create a bit of a landing pad for it so if i go and click on the y x and create a sketch i'm just simply going to bang in just some construction lines because i may not need to do this but it, it just makes my life a little easier makes my life a little better and it's the way I like to work. So what I might do is just constrain to the midpoint there. So what we've got now, we've got these. There's basically a landing pad. That tells me where the middle 
is of my workspace, my origin. So then I can go to insert and I can insert from computer and I've got this one here joined, perfect. So I need to select the face, so I'm gonna insert it on. So first job is to um, actually scale it correctly in the world. So that's why I put this ruler in here. So what I'll do is I'm going to create another sketch on this plane that I've just imported it to. And I'm going to draw as accurately as possible. That was 15 up to five, so 100 millimeters. There you go. And I can click that and down here, it'll tell me it's 4.948 millimeters long in 3D modeling space. So I'm going to do some maths and divide that through. And that gives me 20.2. So basically the moment my drawing is 20.21, you can read it, times too small. So I need to increase the size of that. So I'm gonna take that as a, as, as a number, copy it, and then I'm going to, I've got to finish the sketch and come out of it. But I'm gonna go back to here the import, and we use scale plane X, Y. So that scales both of the planes together. And you can see, ah, we're not doing too bad there now. So we'll go back to this sketch. We'll delete that one, because that's no good to us. And we'll do the same job just to verify. Let me click there. Could we have done that more accurately? Yes, we could have. There you go. So now we do the same thing again. We click and we're on 99.936. So we are 64 microns far too far away. Okay, I'm actually going to just do that one more time. Um, <laughs> because that's a little bit too far away for me. I mean, I, it's the engineer in me coming out, to be honest. <sighs> anyway, and he gives me the opportunity to see this. So as soon as you click OK, so we put 20.1 into here. I actually got to finish that sketch. Let's go back again to the import menu. So we put in 20.1 or something last time, didn't we? But you can see scale XY has gone back to zero. So every time you click OK, everything resets. So that makes life slightly easier, um, but it makes it hard to keep track. Um, anyway, we'll put that in and we'll do it again. And we'll go back to this one. So what we should find now is that's there. And you can see there's a <laughs> yeah. So that draw that is now well. It's within the <laughs> it's within the margin of error because that that drawing is still the same length, and it looks about the same as it did last time. So and there's we're also snapping to a grid here as well which doesn't necessarily help so we click that we click that ah, 99.99 i'm going to leave it there anyway so so that gives us uh, puts us about yeah about right really so what we want to do is we want to position this now on the origin. Now we could go back and we could try moving it around because remember we don't want to scale it. So let's, let's try that. And I'm going to pick up this point here and, and the circles and I can zoom in and that looks that's maybe a bit too high still. That looks about right. Yeah, I'm saying it's still maybe a bit too high. I'll bring it down in on Y slightly. 
Yeah, I'd say that's looking pretty good. Yep, I'm happy with that. So I'm saying that's roughly centered um, and it's to the correct scale. So now we can basically trace on it. So now that's basically this, this in the 3D space in digital form. Excellent. Right. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put on the inlet holes. Now I know, because I've measured them, these are 34 mil in diameter and they are on 86 mil centers. So I'm just going to draw those in. Not try and trace them, let's see how it looks. Um, so we can go back to this sketch because we, we, haven't, we haven't really done anything with it. We just scaled it and we're done with the scaling now. So let's, let's make a start. So there we go, put it there. And we say it's 34 mil. And we can say it is, we use the maths function again, so 86 times 1.5. Mm. May this may not be centered, so we'll 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 start building again, and we'll that's thirty four, and we'll say that that is from there, eighty six, and then we'll do the same again. So clearly it looks like that's not quite centered. So we'll put in a, an absolute number and we're pretty close there. That's why I'd say maybe 126.5. Maybe I should have gone the other way, 126.5. There we go. And they're looking pretty good now. Pretty good. That one's maybe a touch off. But I think they're probably going to be you know, close enough. So what we've got now is those all in place. And they're all constrained because they're all important to us. The inlet holes are important to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same task as this for all of the bolt holes and I want to constrain them as well because we're going to have to check that this drawing is right and I want to make it as easy as possible to come back in and tweak any dimensions. So what you can do is this bit we can kind of speed this up so this is how to do 3D modeling in maybe well, times 30 speed. Watch me go. Okay, so that is my key points on that drawing all dimensioned up and sketched up. But in actually to finish the flange, I need to do the outside. So I've got a shape to it. So what I could do is just make a big rectangle. Jobs are good and it will do the job. Um, uh, I know I don't need this because that's for the exhaust gas recirculation and, and this is for the coolant, which I also don't need. So I'm just going to ignore those. Um, but what I am going to do is just trace around the outside. So I'm going to do this very quickly. And what I'm not going to do is lose my mind over making sure it's constrained because if I come back and have to redo it, I have to redo it. it it's not the end of the world. I'm not really going to be basing any further features on the outside, so uh, I'm just gonna do it quick and dirty. And we'll fast forward through that again, because it's just sketching. You guys are all over that. And there you have it. So we'll just take away the canvas and turn off the sketches and, no, oh, no, can't turn off all the sketches. But you can see we've got ourselves a pretty decent looking sketch there. Um, it could be better. Some of the edges could be a bit smoother. Um, it, this takes as long as the 3D modeling. So this is good enough for our purposes. For your um, 
activity, you might want to spend a bit more time in it. I know I did on the first one. So now we've got a profile. We can actually do something in 3D. So let's extrude it, shall we? So we're going to pick the profiles. We'll just bring it that way. And I'm going to pull it in 15 millimeters. And there you have it. A flange. Now, what I'd suggest is if you're going to, certainly if you're going to 3D print this, is to print this off as it stands. Um, divide it if you need to. Um, and print it off as it is and go fit it to your car. And make sure before you get any further that you um, you, you haven't got it wrong. <laughs> you haven't totally balls it up. But we'll presume that I've got it right. First time for everything. So what we need to do now is bring in the runners. So what we're going to do is bring in something I made on the individual throttle bodies video, which is a little template. So we go to this side. I offered the throttle bodies up kind of here and then made a little bit of cardboard that goes in between that I, just gives me the alignments and the general size. It's not millimeter perfect, but again, I can put on a measurement on there if it, if it needed to be. So let's import that and let's put that onto here. So again, we go to insert from my computer and it's the spacer scan. And I bang it on that one there. Again, we've got temp canvases turned off, so we'll turn them back on and there you go. Now we can see it. There it is. Um, I already know I've got it backwards. And I also know that I've got the angle when I scanned it, because I scanned this again, is minus 1.8. And I also know that scale-wise, I want it to be about 13.1. And then I can bring that in to about there. So that looks about right to me there. I think if you're absolutely millimeter perfect and millimeters are important to you, you're going to want to scale this drawing in the same way as we did the original one. But that look, that for me, that works. So what we need to do is to draw the, we need a surface we can draw on so we can describe where we want the in, individual throttle bodies to connect to. So we need a plane out in space on the same angle as that edge there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a plane on there, but first off we need to define that edge. So we're just gonna do a quick sketch on that plane and we're just going to, in a construction line, just bring in that edge and give the computer something of that it can, it can think about. It, you know, it, it can base itself on. So there we have it. That agrees with that angle. Jobs are good. Now I could have just measured these angles and spaced it all off. So I could have just spaced these angles. So I could have just measured the angles and spaced it all off. May have been easier. Um, probably would have been quicker. Probably not. Not easier. So anyway. We've got ourselves a line. We need a plane on that line. So what we can do is we get out the sketch. We can go to insert, sorry, construction, plane at an angle. Okay, so realistically, we just want to click that. And that will then bring us in a plane that follows that line. Now, what we can do is we can play with the angle of that line and, and we can tilt it around that axis but we're not going to on this one I'll show you that later and there you have it that is our our um, surface that we can then draw the individual throttle bodies on so we'll do exactly that now so let's just double check 
that we are on that plane. Yep, you can see we've got a drawing plane that passes through there. So let's crack on and do it. So I know that the individual throttle bodies have an ID. The connection I need at the end is an in is a 44mm uh, ID and then it wants a 54mm OD and I'm going to dimension these up and, and draw, sketch them exactly the way, same way I did the first ones. So I'm going to put them onto this green line which is the key thing and I'm say 44 44 44 and then I'm going to dimension them again I know that the centers are 80 so I can bring that in And just measure these. Ah, every so often things just don't work. There you go. Right. So that means we've now got four circles there in space, spaced correctly, in the correct area of 3D space in relation to the flange. Now what I don't have is the this is the ID, I need the OD. So what I'm going to do is just select, I can only do one at a time annoyingly, um, and I'm going to offset five mil, which gives me my 54 mil OD. I'm do that four times. Excellent. So we can get rid of the spacer scan now, and that's given me. Okay, we can see we're getting there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a loft. And I've got we, we can we've got the inlet the the um, the inlet tract from there to there defined, but I want to loft the overall the including the wall thickness so we've got a five mil wall thickness there we need that over here as well so let's go back to the original drawing that we did of the flange and let's just put in circles based on the inlet tract circles that we can the port sizes sorry and we'll put five mil on there on each one again i'll do that to each one exactly the same method so now we've got, and I'll turn that scan back on, we've got a profile here and a profile there. And if we were to just join between them, we'd have our inlet runner. So let's give it a go. So we're going to use um, a function called loft. And there's a couple of functions that are quite similar. So sweep does a similar task, but that takes one shape, one profile, and takes it down a path. So that's, for example, pipe work. Uh, it's a continuous shape. But we want loft. Now, loft goes between two different shapes. So that's the key difference. So we're going to use loft. So let's click loft. And profiles, we want to go from that one to that one and that one and straight away you can see it's done something for us uh, this is currently red because it's down as cut because again we're extruding into an existing body so 
what we'll do is we'll create, um, say join, so it's all one. And okay, that's good. Let's see what we'll do, we'll click OK. Turn off the sketches so you can see it nice and clearly. Now, we've got something, but it's not quite right, is it? It's, what it's done is it's just gone straight, straight line. Now that's not great because number one, it's gonna be very hard to get the bolt in there, but also you, the air, air doesn't like <laughs> this way, then that way, then that way. It wants to, you, you need to direct it. You need to smooth that transition. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's get rid of that loft because that's not done the job for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to tr to bring in a path for that loft to follow. And to do that, we need to start it somewhere. So we're going to put a um, a plane in the middle of this port here. So I'm going to just turn the sketches back on so we can see the drawing. I'm going to offset a plane from there, which is the X Y. And I want it to come all the way out to there, which, I've, which I think is probably wrong. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, that's not quite worked out right. So we'll, we'll undo that. We'll try that again. Offset plane, that one. And we're going to bring it out to... Hmm... Well, let's, why can't we do this the better way? And turn the bodies off, because what we want to do is bring it out to that point. So we're going to bring out an offset plane. Can be that one and I want to bring it out to this point. Aha! To object. There you go and we'll click on that. There you go, see? It's not the software's fault, it's my fault. There you go, and now that's right in the middle. So what we'll do is we'll draw and we'll turn this sketch back on because it's been disappeared because we created something from it so it automatically cuts it off we're going to come in left here and on this drawing plane this new plane we're going to sketch something and we want it really to go through the center line there and through the center center point of those circles we want it to be nice and smooth so i'm going to put a fit point spline now there's no science based on this this is purely gut feel. I could go through and do all the CFD, but you know what? If it looks pretty good, it's going to perform pretty good because this is fairly simple stuff. So we put that there and we will, we'll go through that face. Fairly shallow. And we'll just... And that, that looks pretty good. Okay. So I don't we need to worry about any of these edges past the profiles. But I reckon that's, that's a, probably a decent looking path. So let's try the loft again. Let's try the loft function again. Uh, loft, and we want to go between that profile and if we turn the, spin this round so we can get to it, that profile and that profile. So we're back to where we started, but this time we're gonna to go to here, we're gonna choose guide type, not rails, but center line. And we're gonna click on that. Aha, looks a bit more promising. So again, we'll take cut off and we will click Okay, this looks a bit more like it now, doesn't it? So we'll go in, 
So it's a nice smooth transition between that outer shape and that outer shape. Now it's filled these all in, which, okay, is a little bit frustrating and I don't know how to do it. You could make a shell out of that now, but because it's all the same body, it, I'm just gonna deal with the hole down the middle, the actual runner tracked um, later on in the, in the sketch, in, in the modeling, and I'll show you how. But first off, what we're going to do is I'm just going to throw in. So one of the things I need on this is is a vacuum takeoff for my uh, brake booster, brake servo, and I want it coming off of cylinder four here, and I want it coming off at a bit of an angle. So what we'll do is we will create, we'll basically create one, and then once we've um, modelled all of that will then clear out the center why because it gives me the freedom to not have to model things that don't go into the inlet tract so if i've already cleared that out and then i put this um, additional um, uh, vacuum takeoff on i have to stop that flush with the inside whereas if i do the cut loft after i've done that it takes all of the vacuum pipe work away as well I'll show you what I mean. But first off, as traditional, we need a plane. So again, I'm gonna create a, a, a plane at an angle here. But instead of using a plane to come off a, or a line that I've drawn, I'm just gonna take off this corner of the model. If I click that, you can see I've got a plane that now runs through that perpendicular. And you might say, okay, well, why is it put it on that way and not that way? Well, actually it doesn't matter because you can angle it angle it that way as well if you wish so let's just go up here a bit so we can see it a bit better and i'm going to angle that so it comes off at this kind of angle and that's going to allow me to draw something in this in these two direct dimensions and extrude it in this third dimension out here excellent so let's get to some drawing I don't know what happened there. Come on. Computer's starting to chug. Excellent news. Right then. So create a sketch on that plane. Yeah, let's just do a little rotation to check we've got something. Yes, that looks good. And I'm going to draw it in. Hmm. I'm just going to click save because this is computer's starting to chug slightly. Join my patron and let me, allow me to upgrade my computer. Anyway, it shouldn't be doing that. Right, let's just draw a circle, quick as a flash. So we're just gonna draw a circle of, let's say 15 mil. And then I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to do this quick and dirty. What you could do is you could create a, a plane at a different angle and then revolve this. But I'm going to just put this one step on top of the other. So you can see at the moment this circle, this profile is buried halfway in the, in, in the model itself. Doesn't really matter at the moment. We're just going to extrude it. So we click on that. And I don't just want to come out because you can see I've got a gap. I'm going to go two sides and I'm going to go in as well. So I can go all the way in because I know I'm going to remove all that material and it means I cut everything else out of the way. So this out here, this is a bit excessive. So we'll just sit it there and click. And we've got it on cut at the moment. We don't want that. We want to join. So let's click that. Excellent. So that's now properly looking like the kind of thing we need. And you can see this is stuck all the way out here, but we don't need to worry about that because we're going to take it away after. So what we're going to do now is just do another couple of extrusions on here. I'll create a sketch on this plane. That one. Come on, create a sketch. There you go. And I'm going to, I know my hose that I use is about 
What is it? Five, six, eight, about eight mil. So what's click create ourselves a nice eight mil um, circle there. We'll extrude that. Again, just go offset slightly. Maybe something like that. 25 mil, perfect. Join. And then what we'll also do is just create a little bit of a barb on the end. So we're going to do two drawings here, two circles. One's for the hole running all the way through and the other is for a slight uh, flare on the end. So two centre circle. That one will do a 3.5 mil. And then we'll do a... We did eight mil, didn't we? So let's do nine. And then we do two, finish that sketch, two extrudes. One goes all the way through. Again, I can just put whatever. I could say, um, go through all, you know, but it doesn't really matter. That's one, there's the hole through the middle. My sketch has been turned off, as is traditional, but I can go back, turn that on, and just give myself a slight flare on the end. And then I think if I just, it's looking a bit rough, a bit sharp, if we just give it a bit of a fillet on that edge and that edge. And just turn those sketches off. That's looking a whole lot better. And let's just verify we've got a hole all the way through. Yoo-hoo! Excellent. Right then. So what we'll do now is I'll just make the rest of the runners with that same loft. Now the joy of this is that we can use the same center line we don't have to create a new one for each um each inlet tract which is very very handy but you can't do all the lofts at the same time you have to do individual lofts for each individual and but watch out these sketches do tend to turn off now you what you can do is you can name your sketches makes it a bit easier um that was a suggestion on one of the comments um, apologies i can't remember your name but i will i'll put it up down here um, that's a great su great suggestion in fact it's amazed me how many people who know a lot more about 3d modeling are watching me 3d model i mean that's great guys thank you very much i uh, really appreciate it. and you can put some great comments down there in the comment section but you probably got other stuff to do I mean, you know, you might be probably very important people. You, by all means, go spend time with your wives. And then once you've, when, when, come watch a video which is useful for you. Anyway, it doesn't matter. No, stay there. Don't move. Keep watching. Right. Um, okay, so you can see, as I've been talking rubbish, you can see I've used the same center line as the first loft and it's done the job. So, I'm going to go along and do the other two lofts in exactly the same way. Um, again, we'll hit the fast forward button. So there we have it. We're nearly there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the loft to remove everything through the middle. Now, we'll start actually at this end. To be fair, it's exactly the same as the other lofts we've used. So there's not many more tricks to it, but now we're just selecting these inner profiles. So that one and these two. Again, we select the same center line and we leave it as a cut this time. And lo and behold, look at that. That's looking pretty good. So what we'll do just quickly before we get too much further, 
we'll just have a look at this. We'll have a look at how this inlet tract work, looks and make sure it's looking okay. So I'll get out the inspection um, slicer and we can see actually, yeah, that's looking pretty good. You know, that's a nice smooth, uh, there's no sharp edges. There's that short side radius is actually quite, quite high because we're using the thickness of the flange as well to, um, to smooth that out. Um, whereas if you're using a metal kind of laser cut flange, that would be generally parallel up to that point. Um, and you can see at the bottom here, we're, we're flaring out as well. So that you might want to keep that the floor of that flat. Um, you could probably do that by tweaking the, um, the tweaking the center line that we put on, put a different profile on it. But because it's all constrained, it's all linked. You can do that, and all these lofts will all up to date. Anyway, I'm happy with that with that those that section analysis. So we'll turn it back off, and then we'll do the loft for the, the other three. Again, we'll fast forward because it's all the same. Okay, so that's that section done. Now, one just thing just to notice that because our loft finished this profile, it's not actually cut that piece away. So we've got a new body that's been created, body six, but we can just, we can delete that wholly from the timeline. We don't need it. Oh, come on. What do, can we? Okay, so I've just tried to delete this and it's messed up that loft. Why? Because part of this is part of the loft function. So if you ever find that happens, you can't delete it because it deletes all the information about it throughout the whole of the timeline. So what you can do, is you can just remove it and that removes that body at that point in the timeline. It, do it doesn't erase it from the whole timeline. It doesn't, you know, completely just yeah, thanks doc. It just removes it at that point in the timeline because we no longer need it. So, handy trick, handy trick. That looks pretty good, but I do have an issue is that these runners as they stand is too thick to get over the rubber coupler. Uh, now I made them that thick, uh, five mil, because um, I want them to be strong. I also want them to be thick enough so they hold vacuum, but um, they're too thick, they're too, too much OD. So I need a, a, an extension that comes off there that's only three mil wall that allows me to get my urethane, my silicon hoses over, over. And that will also give me a nice, um, nice kind of edge there, a shoulder I can butt up my hoses against. So what we'll do is we'll create a sketch and we'll create a sketch on this face and we will project through all the inner circles of the inlet tract there. Now we could do this in lots of other ways. We could go and look at the other drawing we've got on the plane and we've got previous drawings, but I'm just gonna do it this way because I don't need to mess with the timeline. I'm happy with where it is and I can just throw one thing on top of it. It's, it, it's fairly simple. So I now have those drawing, those, I'm gonna turn the, the bodies off and I should see those drawings there. And I've got, one of those drawings on my plane, excellent. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to offset those on, and I'm going to offset them uh, minus three mil. So I'm going into a prof an existing profile, so I've got to use minus. So click purple, minus three. Oh no, that's not worked, that's done different. Do that differently. And we'll do all of them. And there you have it. Of course, I've turned all the drawings off and the sketches, but there they are. So now we can just do an extrusion on all of these. Not that one.
that one, that one, that one, and that one. I know I want them to be 15, 15 mil. And there you have it. Then we'll just turn the sketches off a second. Now, one thing I am worried about is any sharp edges on the inlet tracked. So what I'm going to do is just chamfer off these four inlet points. So if at any point the um, ITBs and the inlet manifold don't butt up directly and match perfectly, if anything's offset, the airflow won't see a hard edge. It'll see just a hard edge. It'll see just kind of a nice chamfer. So we'll chamfer these off as much as we can in the space that we have. Um, maybe a 2.3. There we go. Look at that. Again, I'm, so I'm, I'm happy with them. They're coming along really well. Now, the only thing which we need to do now is just to put we're going to have a lot of stress raises around these 90 degree sections here. So we're going to put some further fillet radiuses in, further chamfers in around these joining points. Now, what <laughs> we're a bit tight on space there. So we're going to go off this material. One mil there. I'll do 5.00 mil there. That should work. Okay, maybe not. 3 mil. 2 mil. Okay, so we're going to do a 3 by 2 And that's going to help it just take some of those forces. But what you can do is you can start to play around with that and you can also insert um, lofted sections so uh, ribs between here and here between the runners to help it withstand some of the forces and there you go that's pretty much your inlet manifold modeled up so there's one other thing i'm going to do which is someone asked um, and then just just explain how i did the o-ring grooves so it's a fairly simple thing it's just the reverse of what we did there now what i did do so we go back and we can draw a we can go back all the way to the original drawing and we've got these profiles here so what you can do is you can just pick your o-ring so if we the sizes for your o-rings i leave up to you um it's going to depend on your diameter what I did is I didn't use the standard O-ring groove dimensions. There are some available. I didn't use them because I wanted them to sit a bit prouder. Um, that does mean that it doesn't squish down completely and I don't get the face to come completely face to face with the head as you would do, as you'd want normally. So, but uh, nah, this isn't a normal installation. So what we'll do is I'll throw another diameter in there let's really um, check your o-rings for the the diameters they need to be there's there are specifications feel free to use them i didn't um it may have been better if i did but i got to a solution that worked so all you do is you specify your od for your groove so let's say it's a uh, 47 mil and i want my in a groove I want my, that groove to be um, so we want the groove to be three mil wide so I'm going to come inside by three mil so it's a bit of a mess but you can see it's in there and what I'll do is I go back finish the sketch I need to obviously turn the sketch back on so I can see it and then I can choose to extrude the bits that make the most sense to me so it's actually it's this bit and this bit i'm going to extrude that in it's three mil wide i'm going to extrude it in only two mil again because i'm not using standard um o-ring 
kind of fitment dimensions. And if I put that in there and click OK, and then we'll turn all the sketches off again so you can see it. So you can see there. Oh, ha, David, you're an idiot. Go back. <laughs> Two mil. There we go. Right. <laughs> now you can see. So now we've got ourselves a little O-ring groove. If you find that your O-rings are too big or you want bigger O-rings, then you can again just change the shape of the flange give yourself some more meat on the material and go all the way around which is incidentally what i had to do um, because when you go into the 3d printing slicer so this is a little bit more detail you need to make sure that you've got when you're spanning this section um, you're not going straight up onto walls so if you've got a lot of walls like i did and i think i'll show you this here this is this is the, the actual model that I did. If I flip around this side um, and go to there, you can see I've actually increased the diameter there and I've given myself a lot more meat and a lot more space on the inside, actually to the point where I was running out of flat on the head. But again, guys, that's down to you really understanding your engine and your application. But to actually create the O-ring grooves in the 3D modeling software, it's dead easy, dead easy. And there you have it. How to 3D model an inlet manifold for individual throttle bodies. Whew. Wow, that was a long one. Um, if you're still watching now, ha. Huh. That'll be the 3D print for Kev. Right, where was I? Ah, yes. If you're still watching now, give yourselves a big thumbs up. Um, also, just drop one down below as well. Just give it a press, that'd be lovely. Um, it does help. Um, something else that helps, go check out the Patreon. Uh, there's a Discord server, early access, um, some Patreon-only content. Um, there's a few people who've already joined up, so thank you very much for that i'll put their names like across the bottom heading that way uh, so thank you very much to their for their support it really is fantastic um i'm not likely to do another one of these videos anytime soon simply because it takes so long and we've got lots of other stuff to get on with so thank you very much for watching hopefully you've learned something if there's any specific questions anything like that drop them in the comments you never know some people will help you and also check out Lars Christiansen and I have to go post this to Kev thank you very much for watching guys catch you later